The Eucharist is astonishing, joyful, profound, healing, divine. Just keep showing up. Have you ever tried to get an obstinate child to take medication that you know will significantly help them? Did you know that 42% of people who recover from a heart attack don't take their medication? Did you know that more than 70% don't comply with doctor instructions generally after recovering from a life-threatening heart attack? Fallen human nature is real and everywhere. So it's no wonder that we refuse to receive the spiritual medication that God prescribes. Our resistance to the Eucharist is staggering. The definition of obstinate is stubbornly refusing. And sadly, tragically, this perfectly describes many people's relationship with the Eucharist. If you ask people to name the most significant moments in history, most people won't even get close. The Last Supper, is one that will be missing from most lists. And yet, if you remove it from human history, everything changes. The institution of the Eucharist changed everything. And the Eucharist continues to change everything. If we will but cooperate and collaborate with God. This was St. John Vianney's observation. There is nothing so great as the Eucharist. If God had something more precious he would have given it to us. Wow. If God had something more precious, he would have given it to us. If you knew you only had one night left to live, what would you do tonight? You'd spend every moment possible with the people you love. You get your affairs in order spiritually and you do whatever you could to ensure your nearest and dearest knew beyond a shadow of a doubt how much you love them. The reality of death has that kind of effect. It clarifies. It makes our true priorities startlingly clear. When it comes to Jesus, we have the unique case of the most significant person to ever live, the source of salvation for all the world, who knew exactly when and how he was going to die. We would be foolish not to look to the final days he spent on earth for clarity about what Jesus values above all else. What did Jesus do on his final night on earth? The gospels are aligned. Jesus gathered together his closest friends for the last supper and instituted the sacrament of the Eucharist. In the words of St. Luke, and when the hour came, he sat at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And he took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, the cup after supper saying, this cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Jesus knows he's going to die the very next day. In just a few short hours, Judas will betray him. He knows that. His friends will scatter and abandon him. He knows that. He will be brutally tortured and crucified. He knows that. He will die a gruesome death. He knows that. When you know you're dying, it's not the moment to be cryptic or mystical or indirect. You wouldn't leave the doctor's office after a terminal diagnosis and draw up your last will and testament with a bunch of metaphors and symbols and then say to your family, I hope you figure out what I really mean. No, you would be very specific and very clear. Jesus was clear. Jesus was clear. He said, this is my body. Eat it. 
He said, this is my blood, drink it. Do this in remembrance of me. It's not a symbol or a metaphor. It's a clear and direct demand. Jesus impresses upon his disciples that this is a sacred meal of his body and blood and that they should continue this practice after he is gone. The next time you're at Mass, simply allow yourself to be in the presence of God. Quiet your mind. Imagine yourself close to Jesus at the Last Supper. You're there during Jesus' final hours on earth. And when the priest raises up the host and says, this is my body, take and eat, let it sink in that Jesus is giving you the gift of his entire self. Will you give your entire self to him? Will you give your entire self to him? Trust, surrender, believe, receive. Only 31% of Catholics believe in the true presence. Doing something about that should be our number one priority. If you want to help, become a member of the International Society of the Eucharist. We'll send you a free copy of 33 Days to Eucharistic Glory, a copy of the Children's Version, a copy of the Limited Edition Journal, which includes an amazing Holy Week retreat. Click on the button below and become a member today. Have a great day and remember, be bold, be Catholic. We are people of the Eucharist. Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. Every day, I long for more of you. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally at this moment, I invite you to come and dwell in my heart. May the spiritual communion Increase my desire for the Eucharist. You are the healer of my soul. Take the blindness from my eyes, the deafness from my ears, the darkness from my mind, and the hardness from my heart. Fill me with the grace, wisdom, and courage to do your will in all things. My Lord and my God, draw me close to you, nearer than ever before. Amen. Consecrate America to the Eucharist. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Have a great day. Have a great day. <laughs> Come on. Have a great day. Hey, Isabel. One simple way to be mindful of God's presence in the world is to know where the nearest tabernacle is. So while we've got a couple of minutes, I thought we might work on your geography a little. Sounds good, Dad. You're always coming up with something. Hey, Isabel, if I was at latitude of like 40.76 and a longitude of negative 73.97, where would I find the nearest tabernacle? St. Patrick's Cathedral, New York City. 